Hi, my name is Jameson Weiner. In this brief video, I am excited to share with you our work accepted for publication in the Journal of the American College of Surgeons, November 2022 issue about our experience with utilizing an enhanced recovery protocol in complex abdominal wall reconstruction. We have nothing to disclose. Enhanced recovery protocols reduce the physiologic stress placed on patients after surgery. ERPs have numerous benefits for patients in hospital systems, including reduced length of stay, reduced time to return to bowel function, and discontinuation of narcotics, time to catheter removal, and reduced readmission rates. ERP in patients undergoing abdominal wall reconstruction has also been de demonstrated to have numerous benefits, and to our knowledge, the current literature does not examine compliance with ERP components in patients undergoing complex abdominal wall reconstruction. There are a few studies examining the effects of ERPs in a modern cohort of abdominal wall reconstruction patients, and while there are several techniques utilized, one relatively recent advancement was the introduction of the transversus abdominis release or TAR, which was first described by Nowitzki and colleagues for large complex ventral hernias, and it has been shown to have numerous benefits for patients. Belyansky and colleagues expanded the use of TAR with robotic assisted techniques. The purpose of this study was to examine the outcomes for patients undergoing complex abdominal wall reconstruction who were compliant with ERP guided management. And we hypothesized that ERP compliant patients would have a shorter length of stay and possibly improve post-operative outcomes compared with those managed under a traditional paradigm. This was a retrospective study at a single large tertiary referral center. Patients underwent a reef stopa repair or a transversus abdominis release, and patient and operation-specific data was abstracted. We identified consecutive patients who underwent complex abdominal wall reconstruction in a two-year period. Patient-specific characteristics, operative data, and compliance were collected. We first stratified patients by date of ERP implementation, but ultimately noticed that many patients pre-ERP and post-ERP uh, were variably compliant with protocols. To assess the efficacy of the ERP protocol, we defined ERP compliance as patients who met 11 of the 14 abstracted ERP compliance variables shown here. This is concordant with previous literature in colorectal patients that indicated 70 to 80% compliance resulted in improved outcomes for patients. Overall, 132 patients were identified, 66 pre and post ERP implementation. After stratification based on compliance, we identified 46 ERP compliant and 86 non-compliant patients. The two cohorts had no significant difference in age, ASA class, sex, pre op diabetes, COPD, or BMI, no difference in hernia size, type of mesh used, operative time, and there was lower estimated blood loss in the ERP group. When examining the difference between ERP and non-ERP patients, uh, ERP patients had a significantly lower length of stay, required fewer morphine equivalents, and were less likely to have a complication. Although non-significant, ERP patients had a lower percentage of pain medication requests at follow-up and lower rates of readmission. We believe our study adds novel information regarding abdominal wall reconstruction and enhanced recovery protocols and supports its usage in the well-selected patient. To our knowledge, this is the first study to examine this relationship with a focus on compliance. Our finding of shorter length of stay for ERP patients is consistent with the current literature, which has demonstrated a one-day improvement in length of stay. Our two-day difference in length of stay may be attributed to incorporation of minimally invasive techniques, multimodal pain control, or maybe a manifestation of higher compliance to protocol within the ERP cohort. We found that even after integration of a standardized ERP protocol, patient compliance with 11 of the 14 components was still fairly low. We believe compliance issues were largely related to the surgical team's pre-op education and post-op management. The decreased use of opioid analgesia within the ERP cohort is in agreement with other ERP literature, and given known adverse effects and risk of dependency with opioid analgesia, supports more widespread implementation of ERP protocols as standard practice. Additionally, our study provides insight into the value of ERP for patients undergoing invasive retrorectus or TAR procedures. Thank you for taking the time to hear about our work examining complex abdominal wall reconstruction and enhanced recovery protocols. On behalf of myself and all my co-authors, we want to thank the Journal of the American College of Surgeons for inclusion of our work in this November's issue. We would also like to take the opportunity to thank all members of UAB's multidisciplinary team for their efforts in creating and implementing a successful ERP protocol, and without which this manuscript would not be possible. Additionally, I would like to thank Dr. Parmar for his outstanding mentorship and for allowing me to work on this project alongside him.